Oh, it looks like everything is there on the screen. And screen. And here I am. Doc here from North America. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And it's Tuesday already. I love it. Tomorrow is happy to hump day already. I like that. We like that. We like it. All right, let's see what we got going on here. Stock markets are in a sell-off at the moment. A little tizzy. And, boy, the NASDAQ is only up 23% for the year. <laughs> what an explosion. Uh, remember that, traders, buy low, sell high. So, obviously, there'll be an opportunity somewhere around here to buy it again. All right, now, what are we looking at there? There's a the stock market. You think it's trying to bounce back up. This is the... Uh, what is this? This is the Russell here. This is the NASDAQ. You know, it's been getting clocked down all morning long. Let's see if we can, there we are. See, it's just been driving down. Let's see if we can show you the the trading. It's from last night. And so once London open, smack a doodle city. So, and then the S and P 500 joined in over the last hour or so. Because it wasn't getting knocked down too much, uh, you know, price-wise. But it was also in the same trend. So, you can see there. Alrighty. Now, let's take a look at the euro. Let's go over to the currencies. That's what we do here. We do a lot of currencies. We are talking a lot of options the last couple of days, which is really nice. I always enjoy that. And uh, what else do we got going on here? Um, we were talking about a simplistic concept of how to trade spot with uh, options to pr just with an option just one option per one point I guess 125,000 and uh, you know just a, a simpler way so you don't get stopped out instantly for cash how you doing mr. duck mr. big reminds me of like Rush Limbaugh and mr. big you can call me anything you want for cash just don't call me late for dinner. All right. So I hope you had a good two-day weekend. And then yesterday, I hope it was all good. As I nibble away on some corn chips. So, excellent. I like the smiley face. That's good. So you can see here the euro. It, it went into a daily sell. Is that the euro? No, that's, yeah, that's a euro there. So, now where's our little red line again? There, it was right there. So it went into the daily sell there. How are we on the spreadsheet? Let's see what it says on the spreadsheet. So that's line 14, right? So we're three full days. And I guess we can now, you know, because of yesterday, I will adjust this a little bit. We don't usually pay attention to them too much. As long as they're in a trend, I leave it as is. So really now it's one, two, three, four going on a fifth day. So what we'll do is we'll put a four now. And we'll clean up our spreadsheet here uh, today. I just didn't see any reason to do it. And I didn't send one out last night anyway, so it makes it even easier. So we'll go through like that, you know. Hey, Daniel, how you doing? Alas, alas. I hope that, did you like that? We did the options for a couple of days there. Some good conversation. We can always talk options. I like that. And, you know, we can explore it and take a look at it again. And if, if you see a trade you want to take or you want me to spot a trade, we'll try to do that. A sea of red today. Yeah, and that's something. Tesla down almost 20% in pre-market. Yeah. I don't know if it's about 20%, is it? Let me go take a look. I don't think it's 20%. Let's see. Let me see. Uh, where is it at? Right there. There we go. Here it comes. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. There's Tesla right there. It came right up. I love that. Cool. So, yeah, I guess it came down from the, yeah, I guess you're right. It came down from the 502 area. <laughs> it's trading at, what, what is that? That's, uh, yeah, it's even, it's, uh, it's, it's beyond 20%, isn't it? So, it's uh, four, or no, it's three. So, 25% would be uh, 125, right? So 375, so it's over 25% off its all-time high. So that's that's wild action. 
Let's see now. Daniel says uh, Bitcoin, some of the cryptos, oil, gold, silver, all in the red. Yeah, we can take a look at them too. I'll let, and I'll just answer Alessa Les real quick. Thanks. It is possible. Let's please continue talking about. It. Oh, yes, please. We can talk about options constantly. We can co-mingle them with. Uh, what we can do is we can look at synthetics. So in other words, here, I'll give you a good example of what we can do there. And I'm going to go over and look at some of the things Daniel just put up there. What we can do is we can go and like when we're looking at. Let's go back over to currencies. Um, where is it at? Right there. There it is. And, there, and there's the euro. And so what we can do is we can always go look at an option price and look where the uh, product is and say, okay, you know, buy the call and uh, sell the, you know, you're selling the spot. And we can look at the prices, keep track of it, and see paper-wise how it's, how it's uh, executing, you know. Only thing up are the, uh, buy, yeah, flight to safety again, as usual. And, yeah, you see the UUP, the, uh, the dollar index. Let's take a look at that. And then we'll go take a look at some of the things that uh, Daniel had mentioned. Let's see. Um, where was I going again? Let me just look on the screen again. What was that? Oh, yeah, UUP. So let's take a look at UUP. Right there. Ah, where would that red dot come from? Earlier, it was green. Look at a red dot is coming. I don't know how that happened, but it has come in. So, um, let's see. What do we have here? I guess that's... So, it's been in a cell. It's trying to get into the buy today, and it's trying to do that. Now, what's curious is, let's see. This is a th gas line 3 and a 3.5. Let me just go check this one here. Um, I think that's what it is, 4X. Let's see what this one is, because this one looks a lot stronger and I'm going to try to figure out what's the data that's that uh, same source. Okay, yeah, so it's doing the same thing now. It's putting that green dot in. Okay, so it, I'm not sure exactly what was going on there, but it, at one point it was a green dot this morning. I guess it just missed it by the hair of its chinny chin. And you can see it, it's the weeklies trying to get in there, but we're running a five on this. So we may keep an eye on that, running the five. And uh, and then, uh, but uh, you can see here we're just still underneath. So, all right, let's close that, and then it'll come up here again. No, no, we want that. That's Tesla. All right, so now let's see. Let's read the chat line too. Oh, and my IB platform, the option does not open opening for spot. Right. They the CBOE has spot options. They bought the old Philadelphia Stock Exchange. St uh, spot options that I was one of the founding um, participants in with Arnie Saloff and uh, yeah so you know take a look at the CBOE they they used to cover the spot options Let's see Daniel says the only thing are up is bonds right we saw that in dollar index right we looked at that options are not available for underlining AUD options are not available for Underlining euro in spot you're talking about, right? Because the futures we showed you that they're there on futures. Speaking of which, let's just take a look at see where AUD is. There's AUD. Okay, so it's still down. So what we can do is we can add another one to that, make that a four also, right? One, two, three, four. Yep, four. Whereas, see, the spot was functional yesterday. Matter of fact, we can look at the cable, too. But there's that. Now, there is... Go to... Where, where's, this, where's the lesser list? Options are not available. They're, they're there. AUD, I showed them to you yesterday. The the um, IB has those, and they have the uh, the Euros. But they're futures, not spot. I don't know if they, they cover... Ask them if they're covering the CBOE... Charlie Boy Oliver Edward uh, uh, spot options. All right, let's go through some of the stuff Daniel's been looking at there, and I'll, I'll answer anything you ask Alessa also at the same time. And anybody else, just ask your questions, and here we are. 
as I chew away on something. All right. Uh, let's see. What are we looking at here? So let's go up to the top there. So he was saying like Bitcoin. Let's see what Bitcoin's doing. There's Bitcoin. September. Playing with that crazy island thing I've been talking about. <laughs> I heard from Wilco. He's like, wow, did it have to come so fast? It's like, I just read the charts, my buddy. Uh, that's all I do is I read the charts. That's all I can do is read the quant. I don't tell it what to do. It tells me. So that island top has come back down to the channel here. We'll see if it bottoms out in here. Um, kind of curious. I, I, I think I got something. I'm going to show you something just uh, real quick with the cryptos uh, and the mainstreams. I think it's the day chart that does it. Yeah, let's see. It. Check this out. What it is, is, is it, I wrote this article, I guess a couple months ago, three months ago or so, about cryptos and all this other stuff. And let's see now. Let me just get rid of that. Go on. Okay. There's right here. So here is here is Bitcoin on the top. And you can see uh you know it started to go into that cell here. Right underneath it is uh what is this? This is uh, um, what is that? Oh that's the Nasdaq. All right, so you can see the Nasdaq, you know, ran all the way up to here. But notice how the, the Bitcoin was selling down, tried to bounce up and you know sold down. And then underneath that is uh, the S and P 500. Same, <coughs> excuse me, same situation. No virus, no virus. And uh, you can see that. And then this one down at the bottom is uh, crude oil. And so you see down at the bottom, that's crude oil. And I wrote an article about all four of them. You know, at the time. And it's interesting. You see this nice big island top. You know, they jumped in there. It's like as if they knew that the rest of the equity markets were going to rise. Look at that. Just like a panic move up, you know. And then, you see it kind of plateaus, does a reverse head, or it does a head and shoulders. And it seems to top out here. There's your head. But this stuff keeps on climbing. Now, you can see here, same upwardly slope. But nowhere as near as, as uh, uh, you know, appreciating. And then, you know, the break, and it breaks here. It's interesting to see how the uh, the cryptocurrency co you know, mingles with the rest of the equity markets. I just find that fascinating. Okay. thought I'd just show that to you since we're talking about it a little bit here. All right. Now, U.S. oil. Let's take a look at the U.S. oil. Well, we just did, but let's do it again in a more isolated way. And there it is right there. You know, moving down, closed in a weekly sell last week, and they're giving a lot of instant gratification today on that one. That's for sure. So you can see, um, you know, oils, you know, I don't know, maybe it'll bottom out in the 36s or 35, something like that, or in here. And we'll watch the cryptos, and we'll, maybe we'll go and watch that chart every so often with all those different, area, uh, different products. Um, what else is in there? I guess what we should do is have gold. You know, when we go back to that, I guess we should have gold in there. Uh, do I even have that in there? Let's see. So let's close. Let's see. That's Forex. That's the stocks. Did you say anything more about any other stocks? I can show you if you've asked. I don't think you did. Silver, S&P, NASDAQ. All red. Yeah, okay. So we've just looked at some of those. But I think we should pull like, uh, let's see, let's do this. Let's close this one. Apple's doing the same thing. It's moving down like that. And then let's go open that up again. And I think we should replace it with, uh, let's see, here it comes. We'll replace it with, uh, I think a metal should be in here. So like there's NASDAQ. And I think we should put like gold in here. Just to see what the gold look like. Format. Uh, instrument and then GC and right there okay yeah so in some ways it had that island top thing trying to go on here but you know that sell off there so this has done really nothing gold you know I mean it's it's going down yeah and then what are we we're in a daily sell nothing right yeah so we're in a 
Uh, gold is daily sell for a bunch of days and uh, uh, trying to go into the weekly sell this week. See that right there. Uh, so uh, th that that's kind of interesting when we look at the, those four different areas. The NASDAQ 100, let's go back to that again. The NASDAQ 100, which is right here, the hot, hot rock of the planet. And then the cryptos right here through Bitcoin metals through here like through gold and then oil at the bottom of it all so i think that's kind of interesting all right now let's jump back over to where are we jumping back over to oh yes so what did daniel also say he has uh silver let's take a look at silver and s p's well we've seen already s p's but let's take a look at silver let's find the silver Silverado, right there. Now that closed in a weekly sell last week, and we're moving down. We're towards the lows of the day, uh, lows of the last couple of weeks, or something like that. And uh, you can see we're, we went into the sell on Friday, so there's pressure there and more instant gratification going on. And then Daniel said S and P's, S and P's have been kind of ornery. You, know, you can see they're just trying to break down here. Uh, but they have also been in a daily sell for a few days since uh, Thursday of last week. So, and then let's see. Let me just double check that. Yeah, eighth, fourth, third. Yep. And so, then what else did Daniel say? He said uh, Nasdaq. We already looked at that. Okay. So now I slide down. I'm reading. Let's see. Uh, and then uh, oh, Daniel jumps in again with ruble. Oh, I see. Yeah, the classics, the ones that we've been wondering about. Let's go over there and look at that. So, first of all, there's Turkish lira, since that's our like our dessert. We always watch the Turkish lira, right there. And Turkish lira is at all-time highs today. You know, the high now is uh, 748.70, 71 to be exact. And then uh, let's check out the ruble. There's the ruble there, running back up again. I guess that's all that geopolitical stuff that gets things freaked out over there and then let's see what else we got going on there it's not at all time highs but it's running back up into that territory hopefully this will be like an a a b and it'll start to find a way down again i'm a rah-rah for the ruble and let's see then there is uh the uh let's see where's it at the there it is the dollar the dollar uh, uh, ran. You can see that's lifting up. We've been in a sell for that for a while. Look at that. It tried to get in there, but the red and green stopped it. But today, it's trying to do it. You can see it's it's trying to make a move on the upside there. And then, uh, but it's been in a couple of weeks in a sell. And then, what was the fourth one? There was four of them that he was talking about. Oh, yes. Ten-year bond. We can take a look at that. And what else did he say? He said, oh, Mexican peso. Let's see what the Mexican peso looks like. So Mexican peso right there. There's a Mexican peso still drifting down. Uh, it did go into the buy there. Was it right there? Why is that not? I thought we fixed this. So there's the buy, and then that's the sell again. So there's the sell. Because where do we fix these things? There we are. And it's in a weekly sell last week. So let's do that. There we are. Now, odd, what is that all about? How does that end up in there? Let's remove that. There we go. So there's the buy. And it was in a buy for a while. Now it's pushed into the sell there with the Mexican peso. All right, I think we've done pretty much every everything but what the ten year. Let's look at the ten year. Where's the ten year? Here it is, right there. And then we've done every product that uh, that uh, there it is, right there. You see, the ten year was trying to lift up. Uh, went into a daily buy a couple of days ago, right here, and it was starting to show us the volatility was coming. And then they sold it down. I guess Friday. How about that? Put into a cell, and still, as much as it's trying to lift up, it's not doing too good a job, and it missed the weekly buy number there too. Okay, now 
Uh, okay, I think I've answered everything there. So Daniel says the dollar might be on 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 a top. I think an exotic pair that would work would be. Now let's take a look at that. Let's see if there's such a beast. Let's check that out. Yen Turkish. Right there. Let's see where we're going to try to put it in. Uh, try there. And then. Let's see. So it would be. Was it uh, JP Cash? JPY. JPY. Huh. All right. Let's cancel that for a second. Let me just go check how the uh, the yen is. So it's US. Oh, I see. USD JPY. Okay. So. Let's go back to where we're at, and we'll see if we can do Turkish Lira, T-R-Y. This is going to be a challenge, I'm sure, but let's try it anyway. And we can go, you know what we can do is we can look at it on J4X, see if they have it. Let's see, so T-R-Y. And not too much around, is there? 4X. We just go with USD. I see it does that. So JPY. It doesn't seem to do anything over there. JPY. See if I go USD. There's USD JPY. But when I go and just look for JPY, a list of JPY pairs, it doesn't do that. It doesn't also do Turkish Lira. TRY. Is that what it is? Let me just double check. Try that one more time. Cash USD. Where's Turkish Lira? There it is, TRY. So it doesn't seem like it has TRY listings. Let's go over to J4X and see what's going on there. Uh, let's see. So it would be uh, JPY. And slash T R Y. Nah, it doesn't do that. I would, you know, I would have thought like G P. You know, I wonder if they do British pound. That would be interesting, you know. Yeah, I tried that T R Y slash J P Y. Let's try that again. Oh, maybe I did it wrong. T R Y. Okay, let's try that. T-R-Y slash J-P-Y. There it is. They have it. Yeah, IB doesn't have it. But uh, Dugascopy does. This should be very interesting. I would think that there wouldn't be much insight to that. I don't know why, but just because... Because the dollar and the yen move a lot together. I mean, that's my opinion. So, T-R-Y. And symbol. Cash. T-R-Y. Without. Yeah, there's no, no availability to it. Let me just do this too. J-P-Y. Look up. No availability. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, I would I would think not. I wonder I wonder uh, let's see what they have in GPY. Or G B G B P. If there was going to be anything that would stick out, I would think it would be that, honestly. I really would. Yeah, see that yeah, yeah, they don't have a TRY, they just have a JPY. So nah. Uh record lows after record lows on that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean it's 
it's just drifting south. You can see it on the J4 axis. Matter of fact, let's look at it on a weekly basis on J4X. Wow, fourteen fifteen. Huh. And there's a weekly. Interesting. There's those, you know, the big first crash a couple years ago. And that was like when it was in the, the you know, the other the other way. It was in the four handles against the dollar, you know. Interesting product. Yeah, look at it. It's just melting away, isn't it? Uh, let's see. Not Nothing else out there, huh? So, yeah, I would, I'm not sure what's left for them to do. You know, Turkey has to do something geopolitically uh, pleasing to the investors. That's really what it comes down to. Without doing something like that, there's not much room for it to move. Options? What would you like to know about the options? Shall we look at something? Like, uh Take a look. At, do you see any particular product, less or less, that you think that, you know, in other words, like the euro or the pound or uh, do you see anything out there that might be getting ready to make a move? I mean, we're kind of like in a, a very slow anemic. If you go, let's go back to the, some of the other products. Like here's the euro and it, it does seem more quiet, you know, like that. And when you look at it through J4X, you know, right here, that's that's through Chicago Quant. Let's look 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 at it through. J4X. Where's the daily at again? There's the daily. And then what are we looking at again? Oh, yeah, Euro. So let's take a look at the Euro. But I, I don't know if there's a lot of action at the moment. It seems like it started already. And now we're flirting with the weekly. Uh, curious, are there any other dollar TRY options? I don't think anybody trades options in that. I looked... And there were none. You'd probably have to go with over-the-counter options. In other words, you have to talk to your broker, and they have to invent them. And we, when we looked into that last time, it was very expensive, enormously expensive. Yeah, it was really expensive. The only way you really want to deal with options when you're dealing with the Turkish lira is if you're an importer or exporter. That's probably the only safest way. You've got to have a position on. You really have to have both sides on. So you have to be long something. And you're trying to hedge it. Or you're short something. And you're trying to buy it. That's an interesting opinion. So you think... Um, and in that less or less, look around for a product and we'll go find an option spread. You know, a, uh, and see what we can monitor. Take a choose a product and we'll go do it, okay? I'm gonna answer Daniel on the other side of it while you're looking. Okay, so on the short side he says Daniel says, I think the ruble and the Turkish lira would do well and on the longer term I, I think if S P crashes uh, Turkish lira a yen would provide better returns. Hmm. I don't know. I'm a, I have no opinion. I just follow the math. So, but um, let me think about what that. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I hear you there. I just don't have much of an opinion, and I don't see any real crashes. So th there's no way the central banks are going to let equity markets drop too dramatically. And who, I mean, only like 33% on a couple week basis and then bring it back again like they did before. Who who takes the uh, counter side in options? Well, traders do. And the over the counter market, the brokers do. But the, list, the listed exchange side, it's just a market. You know, there, there's uh, traders that trade it, banks, institutions.
you know, that type of thing. But in an over-the-counter thing, it's a little bit more dicey. Definitely a little bit more dicey. So it's usually like the brokers are like the last resort. And they'll charge a good premium if there's no liquidity. Daniel says, uh, Ruble and Lira long. Oh, I see. That's an interesting pair. And Turkish uh, yen short. That'd be an interesting pair, straight. And then, let's see, so, let me think. So, Turkish, you would be long, so you actually think the Turkish lira is going to go, now I'm a little confused by that. Is the Turkish lira going down or going higher against the dollar? So, in other words, are we going into the eights or nines? What is that, how does that work? Because to me, being, I guess, yeah, I guess that would be long, right? Yeah. When we trade, see, so, less, less is when we trade, uh, I guess that's Aussie dollar or GP, GBP dollar or NAS dollar or dollar yen. What counterpart options shall we trade as a hedge? Well, like we showed yesterday, if you're trading on a short term and you're trading the spot, what you really want to do is you want to go buy something with a 40 or 45 delta on the opposite side of it. That's usually the best answer because if you're going to put a 40 stop out there, or a 35, you know, stop out there. Well, then, you know, the, you're better off just doing the options. This way, if they get whipsawed, you don't get taken out, and you're you're protected. No different than if you'd use the stop. It's actually more efficient in many ways than an old-fashioned, you know, uh, stop loss. Let's see. So, you see what I'm saying there? And so the counterpart is, you know, it depends on the market itself. What counterpart options shall we, yeah. So you want to look for something with a delta in the 40s. And you're, remember, you're, you're trading the spot. The, in this case here, the, the option is only an offset to a stop loss. So you don't get whipsawed out of something. And, 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 you know, in other words, you know, a lot of times people put like 30 or 40 pip stops or 50 pip stops in. Well, you're just as good, better off of just buying the the the, the forty some odd percent delta, and you're you know the, the, you could lose the same amount of money over time, but uh, you know it's in the, not in one day. How many times traders have you heard other traders or even yourself say, or you're or, or you seen where you put a position on, you think it's going to go do it, you get stopped out. And then, you know, an hour later or two hours later or three hours later or one day later, the next thing you know, the thing is where you expected it to go. So that's why we suggest using the options on things like that so you don't get stopped out on it. Okay, so Daniel says, I think there's a chance of a bull run restart in stocks maybe in October or maybe November. September is kind of done. Yeah, I agree with that. And so it does, okay, so it was, uh, and Farkash says, doesn't the broker have a huge risk in OTC options? Yeah, that's why they pump up the premium. We we looked at options when Turkish Lira started to get nuts. And they were out of their minds. You know, in other words, it was like crash of 87 type prices. So it's not even worth trying to do the options in it. Because it's basically a lose no matter how you cut it. Sell the premium. You know, it, they'll find a way of torturing you. Buy the premium, you have the decay going on. You know, I mean, spreading, I guess, is the only way you could do the options. If you can get the, the, the brokerage houses to sell you sell options for a fair value, you would want to buy, you know, in the case of the, the Turkish Lira, what are we, 39 weeks, 40 weeks now? 40 weeks in a weekly buy. So maybe if we get into a weekly sell and a daily sell, you, know, you try to go to your broker and see what kind of put spreads we could, you know, something like the seven... Oh, I don't know, like the seven even, six fifty put spread, or you know, something of that nature. You know, probably worth buying. But you have to monitor it for a while too, because you know, if they're the only game in town, well, maybe someone will jump in. But if they're the only game in town, <coughs> I have seen brokers do that. Brokers go, I sold that to them, and I'm not buying it back. Unless I make money. And so if they don't have anybody to offset it, you might have to have a second account somewhere. 
to offset it because you might have to arbitrage it yourself to somewhere else because uh, I've seen brokers go, I'm not stepping up and paying for it. You know, no, they'll go, they'll give you the same bid. Oh yeah, I sold it for, uh, you know, 40. Uh, I'll, I'll buy it back at 39. You're like, I'm losing a pip and I was right. What is that? You know, that's why listed is so much better versus an over the counter. Uh, let's see. So, uh, let's see. Did, did I answer everybody's questions so far? Daniel says now, let's see. Dollar, lira, long measure, dollar, buy, Turkish lira, sell. Right. Okay. So, it's going, uh, so it goes down, tur the Turkish lira. So I'm, I'm confused on this one. Let me think now. Let me rethink, let me rethink that. So, a long is, you're long the dollar and you're short the Turkish lira. Yes. That makes sense to me. Okay. Okay, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That would be, you know, I mean, I think this thing wants to go to the eights and nines. Unless unless the President Aragon starts to do something geopolitical that would make the money want to come back and invest there. It doesn't seem like that's going to happen. He's got He's got a route that he's on, and he's not really interested in doing anything else with it. And there's Turkish Lear again up top. You can see on it with our J4X here, uh, with our uh, Chicago Quant. And then uh, let's see what it looks like on the J4X. Uh, let's see. All right, now, uh, Farkash says, please take a look at Microsoft. Sure, let's take a look at Microsoft. Let's see, where are you, Microsoft? Microsoft, where are you? Let's try a day chart on that because I don't I don't think I pay attention to Microsoft. So let's go there. Uh, where's the stock at? There's a the stock. We can do that one. And let's make a copy and a paste. And let's put Microsoft in there. Oh, we don't have the weekly in that, do we? No, that's the wrong one to do. Let's let's delete this. Let's go find one that has, like that has one. How about the other one that's on it? Let's see. That oh, here's a good combination. We can make a copy of this and put it in there. Copy. Paste. And we can put it in there. We'll get rid of that. Remove. Uh, let's see. Because I want to see the weekly and the daily. MSFT, Microsoft. There we are. And then let's do that. Uh, cancel. Yeah, okay, there it is. Same thing again. MSFT. There we go. So there it is right there. You can see, uh, let's widen that out a little bit. Uh, when did it sell? That's interesting. It's been in a buy there for a while, right? And so let's move that back. Then it went into the buy here for this move right there. Uh, I kind of don't like the green. I, I'd rather have the, I guess, I guess I have to, maybe yellow. Yellow would be better. There we are. So you can see here, it went into the buy on a weekly here, went into a daily buy, it couldn't go, it went into the sell buy, then a sell, I guess maybe that was the buy right there, let's see. Yeah, that's a plus 05 and a plus 10. So it goes into the daily buy there. So grab, let's grab that one and put it there. That so goes there and then two days later, it goes into a sell and it goes right back into a buy again the next day. And it had a nice ride up, and then it went into the sell just like the the rest, like the Nasdaq did, and all. And you can see here, weekly hasn't done it yet, but it's playing with it. And let's see, let's scrunch it a little bit. And let's see, we'll move that over to there. Wow, it was on a weekly buy for a long while. Look at that. It's like the Nasdaq. Went into a weekly buy the first week of uh, last week of March. Huh. So that was at 160 some odd dollars a share. 
And where's it at now? Ran up to two hundred and uh, two hundred and thirty dollars a share. Uh, interesting. Microsoft looking good there, eh? Let's see. Daniel says, "What about VXX? Did you see they're going to start a, a volatility future for the Nasdaq? Uh, VXX is the ETF for the VI VIX. Yeah, let's look at that." So I guess we'll add that in there. V, no. V, X, X, look up. There we go. What was the other one you were looking at? Yeah, V, X, X. Right. And VIX. Okay. All right. Let's, let's put that in there. And you know what I might do too is. Uh, And I'm going to do this. I'm going to put a VXX. I'm going to change it from uh, black to like gray. Because I really like gray better. Black messes with my eyes. There you are. So there's VXX. Now you can see here, this was in a cell. It did go into, a, I guess it was like there. So it went back into a cell here. Did the buy there for a week, and then went back into a sell. Somewhere around here, I guess it was. Let's see what the numbers were. That's a plus, and that's a plus. So no, the sell didn't come until right here. That was a little whipsaw city. And it was going into a, and it's in a buy on Friday. It went into a buy on Friday. I think I have that on my, my spreadsheet. Anybody gets the spreadsheets will see that. Went into a weekly buy. Let's see right there. And just widen it a little bit like so. There we are. Now, it's been in a daily buy for days. I know I know that we've had that on a daily buy because I, I even posted one on LinkedIn or something like that. And then let's see, move these over. There's the sell there. There's the buy here. The match sell was there. Take this buy here, put that in right there. Let's just double check it. That's a plus. Is the other, is the other one a minus? They're both plus. So it's a day before right there off of that one. That's the buy. And then let's get rid of that one. And then let's see. There's the sell. That has to be next in that. A couple days. These are the dots. Um, and the sell there it just jumped in and out, didn't it? And there's the buy right there. So it looks like, yeah, VXX is moving up nicely. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Do you want to see the VIX? VIX, we have. We, where do we, we keep that? I'll show you where we keep that. I keep that over, uh, right there on my dookie day week here it comes here it comes right there yeah so it's been in a buy two three four five six seven this is the eighth day and there you know it climbed into the weekly right there that's the vix that was smoother. You can see it went into the sell here and didn't come out of it again. Uh, I guess it did. It went into a buy here. I guess it went into the buy there and then went back into the sell there. So let's see. Uh, Alessa Les says, uh, AUD, shall we trade? Yes. That's, that's maybe the only liquid things you can use. Like I said, talk to your broker about uh spot options but let's what we'll, once you find them we'll both look at them make sure they're not overpriced you know in the sense of like you know the, the bid and offers are ridiculous but i know that the cboe does have them there they they bought the old philadelphia uh, uh currency exchange so they have the they have those options somewhere someone's trading them hey yellowfish 
Let's see, how's it going? It seems to be okay. We've we've had some you know entertaining days here the last uh, week. You know, like usual. Good seeing you. Love that nickname. Um, oh, I, I do. I have a picture. Oh, matter of fact, let me see if I can show you this picture. Uh, I think you'll get a kick out of this. It's like the second biggest fish caught. Let's see if I can find it. And it's it's orange more than it's yellow, but your but your emblem is orange, and that's what caught my eye. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, let's see. I'll find it because because I just saved it and shared it too. Let's try this. And I'm going to show you this. This is pretty cool. And let's see. We'll find it in a second. Or maybe put John's things up there. Let's see. Let's put John up there. Okay. Oh. And wrong keyboard. I just want to show you this. This is really neat. Okay. I think that's there. It is right there. Okay. Here we go. Uh, we're going to move over to this for a second. You'll be able to see this. this has got to do with just me being me. And there it is right there. Look at that. Look at that fishy. See that fishy? Yellow fish? <laughs> the one on top, not the one on the bottom. The one without the mask. Look at the size of that, baby. Yellow fish. Yellow eye rockfish, that's what it is. Caught by Kevin O'Connell on 11th of 2008, Prince William Sound. Look at that. <laughs> uh, my crazy memory of things. Look at that big fishy behind it. I think that's a, uh, what do they call that, a sturgis? So. All right. I just thought, you know, I just, uh, I love that yellow fish thing. And I, and I saw that, uh, I mean, your your nickname, I like that. And I saw that and I just had to show you that. I've never seen one of those before. No? Yeah, that's a, I guess that's the second largest one caught. And that is my son-in-law. He's a research scientist uh, up in uh, Alaska a couple months out of each year. He goes up there, uh, does it in the dead of winter, and then he does it in the dead of summer. And he's all the way out to the Azores, and he, uh, they they work for NOAA and the Fish and Game of Canada, and they're they're uh, what they do is they they monitor. You ever see like that that TV show, The Deadliest Catch? They have scientists on the boat also. They make it look crazier than it is. So, so anyway, there there you go. Yep, yeah, that's that's what that's all about. Matter of fact, he's getting done his tour in another couple of days. All right. Uh, let's see. Where were we? So yellowfish, we did that. Let's see. Wow. Uh, Duke Discovery does not have any of the spot options for sure. Uh, that's a good question. They do. Uh, oh, no. Wait a minute. No, they don't. They do just binaries, I think. They're just doing binaries at the moment. Which, when you think about it, the binaries may be worth doing if they, if you can get them at a decent price. And that's that's something to look at, too. Now, I can tell you this. There's no, no one can sell you Turkish Lira. At a, as a bargain, so you're going to have to be careful with that. But you know what? You can probably get very competitive prices through Dukascopy on some of the other products like the Cable, the Aussie, so forth. And they probably do. And you know what? If you can do a 24-hour binary, that's definitely worth doing, you know, uh, especially if it's really dirt cheap and really wide, you know. See, the, that's the thing is that you would really like to do like a 60-day one. You really do. You want to do a 60-day one because it's cheaper to do that because you, you could you could limit the amount of loss to it more, and a binary makes it very tough. You know, yeah, you, you know that you have to ha hold on. You know, 24 hours and it's gone, and so you know if you did it for like four pips, it's one thing, but if you do it for something like 30 pips, ouch, that hurts. You know. So less or less, that's. But talk to your Dukascopy broker and see what they can offer you. And if you're really fired up on something and you think it's really happening, you know, you might want to do a binary with Dukascopy that's, uh, you know, only maybe eight or nine pips if you really believe it's going to make a move. 
Oh, is that what it is? Three minute minimum. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, they moved it from the one minute. Okay. Yeah, I I started suggesting that the one minute op- op- open the doorway for uh, doing them uh, doing uh, binaries on news, you know, uh, and so forth to co co uh, mingle with uh, Giannis's uh, 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 tutorial on how to trade uh, economic, uh, you know, fundamental news. Yeah, and twenty four hour max exactly. Exactly. That makes it tough because you really want to use it. You know, imagine if you put something on, it doesn't happen and you think it's going to happen over the next 24 to 48 hours. You don't want a 24 hour clock on your back. You want you want to have like a 60 day clock on your back. That's a lot easier. So. OK, yeah, that make that that that, that makes sense. Yeah, that, that, I, I had suggested that, that uh, those binaries could be more beneficial to the buyer. I, I, I hadn't looked. I stopped doing it. I, I, I did their contest for a little bit in the binaries. Or I did the, uh, yeah, I think I, I did the simulated for a while. And I made the suggestion. I, you know, I guess sometimes people do pay attention to me. I know Duke Escopi does. Uh, but, yeah, I said that I thought that the binaries could be beneficial to the traders not the brokers who are doing it because you know you know one minute you know a lot of times they last 50 to a minute and a half in action so next thing you know is you're throwing you know you're barely barely having by the time you got it on and by the time it expires you know you got a good chance of making money pretty hard to value those things at that rate you have to increase the volatility that's for sure all right, uh, where are we at now? So am I answering everybody's questions? Is everybody's questions being answered? I'm trying. I think I'm doing my best here. So and so, so my last opinion is for a less a less is uh, oh so was, oh no Yellowstone says something. Some non U.S. dollar pairs. It's ten minutes. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that Yellowfish. Th- oh, I see. It's Yellowfish is giving me all that data. Very good, Yellowfish. Thank you. Yeah, he, uh, that deadliest catch thing. What happens is that they have uh, someone from NOAA, and they work for NOAA and uh, Canadian Fish and Game. They work. They're they're one. They work for. It's a congla- It's a like a a a, a company. Uh, not a company, but a uh, a subset. You know, you're a government worker, but you're you're uh, working for both governments. I think they call them a G6 on level of, of clearance. And so then what they do is they're on those boats, you know, with all that catching going on, they can monitor what's going on. They can see uh, all the different things. They can look at the liver and, you know, they can check out, the, you know, if there's any lesions. They do all kinds of research and then they have a lab in Seattle and they send the, send the things to Seattle for testing. But they do the dissection on the boat and they've got a team of two or three. And he leads a team every year. He has a, he's a, hell, last year he had two PhDs for three weeks on his team. And he was still leading the team. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, I thought you'd like that fishy thing. <laughs> it's cool. My subconscious kept on telling me yellowfish meant something. I couldn't remember what it was until just now. So, all right. Uh, and so again, for a less, a less, um, let's see, uh, spot option for sure. You know, it, it won't, you can use the future option. It, it won't hurt if no one has a spot because, because during the day they, they trade it, par- they trade with each other perfectly. No, they're not going to, they're going to, they're going to keep the, the premium and the carry trade all in line. So you don't have to worry about that. It'll still give you money. It'll make you money. And the premium is not that big. I think the cost of carry is like 25 pips for three months. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, let's see, where are we at now? Well, we got about three or four minutes left. Anybody see anything else you want out there? We've looked at a lot of things today. Oh, we got to figure out a name for this, too. Uh, I guess we could talk about uh, binaries and spot. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that, that's a good title, too. But we didn't get too deep into it. But you know, it's it's all right. You know, I mean, when we discuss something like that, 
you know, it's nice to advertise it. And then uh, from there, uh, you know, we uh, put it up on there and maybe somebody looks in and checks it out, you know, looks into it. And we can always answer the questions, binary options and spot uh, cash. I guess we could say that. Yeah, that's that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use that. Do you believe that IB have uh, spot options? Oh yes, and future options. Yes, but the thing is that the futures options are are from the the CME group, and it's in the future side, and the spot options are in the equity side at the CBOE. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't have a problem with a three minute spot, uh, binary, um, you know, especially for news, you know, if you think you know, like, you know, back in the, um, back in the, uh, Brexit days where they were rocketing the bind, uh, the, uh, British pound, a three minute binary, you know, could be a really good, good trade. You know, a lot of those things are pretty good trades. Yeah, we can use, we can use spot and, or. Uh, future uh, uh, options on uh, we, uh, not what I'm going to say now. We can use spot, you know, equity spots. You know, I guess you call them equity spots. Uh, equity forex, equity forex from the old Philadelphia Stock Exchange, which is the old Philadelphia Currency Exchange, and CBOE bought that, so you could use those if they're liquid. But the futures are are definitely liquid. They're CMA. And so there's only like a 26 pip carry, so it wouldn't it wouldn't have any real effect at all. And remember, we we're looking at 55 to 65 days out, you know, 40 45 delta, you know, low volatility, you know, that type of thing. But yeah, yellowfish, I, I would have no problem with a three minute uh, binary, you know. Uh, you, it, but you have to do your technical. You know, what we could do is if you pop in tomorrow. What we can do is we can we can look at that. That's something we haven't explored yet. So we could actually go and and try to find uh, a product that 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 we think is going to get volatile, and try to find the spot when it does it, and then look at the binary, like the three. We can figure out what a three pip, uh, three minute binary looks like. Dukas Copy has that therm, uh, theor theoretical modeling thing for it, so. Yeah, Alex, Alex, no problem at all. All right, well, we're going to get out of here. This is Doc. Good, stop in, and we'll, what we'll do is we'll try to hunt down a binary and and, uh, and find a reason. In other words, you got to use a technical reason why you would use a three-minute. And we, we've done that before. Uh, some you know, When news is coming out, you know, a three-minute wouldn't be bad. A minute before, you put it on a minute beforehand, and two minutes, it goes off two minutes after the news. So it could be, a, you know, it could be a very easy play. And it could be relatively cheap, too. You're only risking, you know, because it's a binary, you might be only risking, a, you know, a few pips, like, you know, four or five pips, something like that. So you have great potential there. All right. This is Doc from North America. Thank you guys and gals for asking questions. I appreciate it. And it really helps me out. I enjoy it. It makes me think. Doc needs to think. He needs to keep that brain functioning. And Doc from North America saying over and out. Happy trails to you. To all my trading friends. Happy trails.